What's going on everyone? So the Cleveland Cavaliers have officially been eliminated from the postseason and now all of the questions and all of the what is Cleveland going to do this offseason is now coming to a head, right? Because they have a lot to figure out, primarily with Donovan Mitchell. Now the Lakers and Donovan Mitchell would be a match made in heaven. The Lakers are very interested in Donovan Mitchell. There's already reports that have came out that said the Lakers already have their package lined up, ready to go. They don't want to play games. They want to land Donovan Mitchell. They'll be in the front of the line. All of that. And there's going to be a lot of speculation, a lot of ties, a lot of news in regards to the Lakers' Donovan Mitchell. But Cleveland, they want to keep Donovan Mitchell. That's their plan. That's their goal. They want to give him an extension. However, their word that if he's not willing to sign the extension, they're not going to run the risk of losing him. They will make him available this offseason. Now, it's not a lock for the Lakers by any stretch of the imagination, right? There is word that Donovan Mitchell wants to go to a big market, that he's basically a Nick or a Laker. But the Knicks, a lot of questions of do the Knicks want Donovan Mitchell? I don't really think that they do. They did a couple years ago, but that was before Jalen Brunson's resurgence and the team that they have now. Donovan Mitchell doesn't really make a lot of sense on the Knicks, especially when somebody like a Carl Anthony Towns may become available this offseason. So words about that, that if Minnesota ends up losing this series to Denver, that they're going to make Carl Anthony Towns available, right? There could be some other Lori Markin in, right? There are other options that make better sense and fit for the Knicks. So I don't know. Look, if the Knicks want Donovan Mitchell, the Knicks will get Donovan Mitchell because he wants to be a Nick. That's his place. He That's where he thought he was going, right? But there's other teams that are expected to throw their hat in the rain. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, the Miami Heat, those are two teams that definitely will be pursuing Donovan Mitchell. To me, it boils down to how badly does Donovan Mitchell want to be a Laker? If he really does and he kind of makes that nudge for it, he'll be a Laker. If he's kind of open to like, hey, you know what? I'd, I wouldn't mind Miami. I wouldn't mind Brooklyn. Send me to any of those. Now it becomes his bidding war. Now it becomes a concern. But there is word and reports that are coming out that if Donovan Mitchell does stick around with the Cleveland Cavaliers, that if the Cavs are able to sign Mitchell to an extension, which is always a possibility. You never know until you know. Um, but if they sign him to an extension, uh, that Rich Paul, who is the uh, agent for Darius Garland, is going to talk to the Cavaliers about trading Darius Garland. That Darius Garland is going to demand a trade. The key word or name that I said there is Rich Paul. So Rich Paul is Clutch. Darius Garland is a member of Clutch. If the Cleveland Cavaliers end up going the Donovan Mitchell route and Darius Garland becomes available, guess who may end up getting Darius Garland? The Los Angeles Lakers. Now, the Lakers adding Darius Garland, I'm all for it. I've seen some mix. Some people are kind of like, ah, no, I don't really you know, like Darius Garland. Some people are like, yeah, he's great. Bring him in. He's 24 years old and he won't be 25 until January. So, like, midway through the season, he'll be 25 years old. Darius Garland is an excellent basketball player. People forget, because Donovan Mitchell was there, he kind of just became the, this weird, almost outcast at times, right? Darius Garland was looking like the next big point guard in this league. I mean, he was dropping, like, 22 a game. Give it, he averaged, like, 22 and 9 or 21 and 9, something like that. On his at his all star year, he was an all star. He was like 22 years old at the time, right? Like this is a guy that was looking like, oh wow, he could be really good. He's also excellent defensively this year. He's better defensively this year than I thought he was. He's a 115 defensive rating. Like that is really good by like today's league standards. Like the the league average this season was like 117 or something. Like that. So he's like two points better than league average. Usually it's around like 115, 116. So but so basically he's playing defense. He's averaging like one and a half steals a game. He's got decent size, de decent length. He's not like you know six four or anything. I think he's like six one, six two. Um, but he's got good length and he gets after it. He's got energy, athleticism. He's got all the things that you want to check off for the Lakers. But also, he's a guy that shouldn't cost anywhere near what 
Donovan Mitchell cost, right? So that should put the Lakers in good position to potentially land a guy like a Darius Garland. And he may even, you may even be able to get other pieces on top of that, which would be nice. Now, I'm not even saying necessarily from the Cavs, but like Darius Garland, the beauty of Darius Garland is he isn't making this like ridiculous, you know, well, he's scheduled to make that as we move closer. But um, as of right now, He'll be making 36 million uh, next season. 30, we'll call it 37 million because 37 million, 725,000. And then it goes to 39, 42, and 44. And then, um, so you be locked into him long term, right? So you got a guy that, again, you can have for the long haul. Uh, he's a guy that makes sense now and for the future. And at 36 million, it gives you. Uh, because I don't think it's going to cost you three firsts and all that. I don't think it would cost you what it would cost um, Donovan Mitchell, right? So you get a guy like a Darius Garland and then maybe even position yourself to go get another piece or two, right? Or there's talks. I made a video about it earlier today. Check out that video if you haven't, about DeMar DeRozan, right? So Maybe you work something out to where you sign and trade for DeMar DeRozan and then go and trade for Darius Garland, depending on what DeMar DeRozan makes. Or if D'Lo walks, right, and you can kind of free up your your uh, uh, full uh, non-taxpayer exception, right, your mid-level exception, would, Do would, he, would DeMar DeRozan be willing to sign that? Now you got like Garland, DeMar, Vando, LeBron, and Anthony Davis. Be pretty interesting. But... I don't mind the idea of Darius Garland, right? I like Darius Garland a lot. I think he gets after it on both sides of the basketball. He gives you some athleticism, gives you a point of attack, gives you that tenacity. He's a guy that when Donovan Mitchell was out at times, I know he didn't have a great game this last uh, game for the Cavs, but the game before that, he had like 27 and 12 or something. Like, like He's shown that he can, he can be a guy. Like, I don't think he's the best player on a championship team. I, he might not even be your second best player on a championship team. But he is a guy that I do believe, law inside LeBron, law inside Anthony Davis. I think he could really shine, uh, play on ball, play off ball. He has some experience playing off ball, playing alongside Donovan Mitchell. So he'd be able, I think, to adjust a little bit to LeBron James. Um, but then also post-LeBron, he'd only be like 27 at that point. Right, so you'd have him for the long haul alongside Anthony Davis. Again, if you get some other pieces, get some other component. Like, I, I don't hate the idea. Like, if all else fails, I don't hate the idea of Darius Garland. The question would be like, would you rather have Darius Garland or Dejounte Murray? That's where I think the question lies. I think for right now, I'd probably rather have Dejounte Murray, but I think long term, I'd rather have. Darius Garland. And I think Darius Garland would give you more upside potential. Like, I think the ceiling with the Lakers, right, like right now, right? Let's say you get Darius Garland, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. I think the ceiling for those three are higher than with DeJounte Murray, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. But I think, I think DeJounte Murray is a little better because, I mean, he's older and more experienced and more veteran. I think he's a little more comfortable in the spot that we would need him to be in the player we'd need him to be for the Lakers with LeBron and Anthony Davis. So I think he would kind of, I think he'd fit a little better currently where I think Darius Garland, there might be a little kind of feeling out period. Um, and also I just think like, you know, I think post LeBron Darius Garland, now he has the ball in his hands, right? Now he gets to be kind of the point guard and look to score and make plays and all that stuff where, you know, DeJounte, I think, I think both will be able to do that, even with LeBron. But I just think, like, you know, can Darius Garland kind of meld to being the third guy? Where right now he's the second guy, right? Like, now he's dropping the third guy. Where I think DeJounte would kind of be more willing to embrace that and kind of... But, I don't know, we'll see. Time will tell. But, it's just, um, I mean, Darius Garland, of course. He's going to be linked to the Lakers. He's a clutch client. If Donovan Mitchell doesn't come through, he ends up he ends up becoming an option. I I might rather have Darius Garland over Trey Young, if I'm being honest. Now I, Trey Young's the better player, right? Trey Young's better, but I like I just I like I like Darius Garland a lot. Like I genuinely do, and I think him away from Donovan Mitchell, I actually think he could get back to being like that All Star level guy. I think he could be a you know 25 and eight guy. 
right? If given the proper role, given the proper opportunity, right? He was heading that way. Again, like his All Star season, he was he was like twenty two and nine, right? So to think he can average three more points in in the other position now that he's a little older, a little more mature, a little more experienced, I think he could be a twenty five point a game guy, easy. So I don't hate the idea of going and getting Darius Garland. Maybe go get some other pieces, right? Gives you that youth, gives you that athleticism, gives you that playmaking, gives you another consistent scorer. He'd be like your third guy. So, you know, if he does have a game where he only goes and drops 11, it's not the end of the world, right? That's still better than D'Lo when he's not, you know, in his bad game, he's giving you a goose egg or he's giving you two, right? I'd rather I'd give me the 7 to 17 guy, like, you know, but regardless, you know, Lakers are going to make some moves. They're going to do something. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Still think that it's more likely that they land Donovan Mitchell than they do Darius Garland. Just because I think Donovan Mitchell, I don't think he's going to sign an extension. I think he's going to ask for uh, being out. If that happens, they're not going to get rid of Darius Garland. So my guess is that Donovan Mitchell ends up requesting a trade. Or, you know, not maybe not requesting, just like, hey, I'm not going to sign an extension. So that way he doesn't really have to request a trade. The Cavs just go, okay, well, we're going to trade you now and then work with him for a trade, try to get the best return, best package, but also send him somewhere he wants to go. And then the question is, like, how much does he want to go to Lakers? If Donovan Mitchell's like, no, I want to send me to Lakers, he'll be a Laker. If he's kind of open to, like, other destinations, now things kind of get complicated and the likelihood just it drops significantly because the Lakers do have the assets to now go get a guy, but so do several other teams. Right. And a team like Miami, you know, they got like three picks. I think it's like two picks and a pick swap, something like that. They have, but they also have like Tyler Hero, like they have uh, Jaime Jaquez, they got Jovic. Like they got several guys that may be very attractive to a young Cavs team where, like, yeah, Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura might be a little uh, attractive to them. But I just think like Tyler Hero could slot in perfectly, uh, you know, alongside or in place of Donovan Mitchell. I, I just think, you know, say you could say the same thing for Austin Reeves, but Tyler Hero, he's been balling. I don't know. It just kind of, we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like the idea of Darius Garland? Do you think no? Stay away from Darius Garland. Do you like the idea of, um, you know, just stay away from both? Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland? Would you prefer? who? And also, who would you rather have? Would you rather have Darius Garland or DeJounte Murray? I think that's a good question. So let me know down in the comments. That being said, if you even like this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.